Welcome to this lesson on solving differential equations in R. I think you're going to learn some basic but really useful and powerful commands. Um, that's my goal for you. So uh, uh, let's start out solving uh, just a basic, simple, single differential equation. Let's think about the differential equation dx dt equals 1 minus x. So again, the unknown function is x of t, and this equation says we're looking for the function x of t that satisfies um, that if you differentiate it, it's equal to what you get if you take 1 minus the original function itself. Okay, that's, that's what this differential equation means. And so what we're going to do is come over here in R, and we're going to use uh, the command integrate ODE. That's our primary command. And inside, we type dx. That's going to be our shorthand for dx dt. That's like the left-hand side of the equation. Then a tilde, and then the right-hand side of the equation, which is 1 minus x. Now we need to give some additional information. We need to give an initial condition. What's the original, the starting value of x? So I'll choose x equals 0. And I need to say the times, the values of the independent variable that I want to have the solution from. So I'll say t dur, like t duration, equals list from equals 0, comma, 2 equals 4. So this means I want to solve the differential equation starting with x equals 0 from t equals 0 to t equals 4. And of course, the solution, I need to give some kind of name. This, this is going to spit back a bunch of stuff that we're going to use to access the solution. So for now, I'm just going to call it SOLN for solution. You could call it anything. It doesn't matter. Okay. So now we have something. And what we would like to do is to plot it. And the way to get the, the solution itself is to take the name that we saved the output into, which in this case was SOLN, and then do a dollar sign, and then the actual name of the function that we were solving for. And the name was x. So I'm going to do solution dollar sign x. And what I want to do with that is plot fun it. I'd like to plot that as a function of t. Um, and we can do the t limits. Uh, from 0 to 4. And if we do that, we get appearing over here a very nice plot of the solution. Um, it's also quite straightforward to do examples that have uh, parameters in the differential equation where you can change the values of the parameters easily. Um, so let's do another example. Um, this time I'm going to do the logistic differential equation. Um, which is a, a model of population growth with constrained resources. And we'll say dx dt equals r times x times 1 minus x over k. And if you've learned about the logistic equation, you know that k is the carrying capacity. r is kind of like an effective birth rate within the population. So we're going to choose an initial value of uh, x equals 1. We're going to give some values for those parameters. So I'll say the carrying capacity is 10. And we'll say r is 0 0.5. And we'll solve this from 0 to 20. Uh, whoops, let's see what I did wrong. Ah, I used a lowercase k here, but an uppercase k here. So I need to fix that. There we go. Now it works. Um, and if I would like to go ahead and plot the solution, um, we can do the same thing. I want to plot fun the solution x of t, and let's plot it from 0 to 20. And if we know anything about logistic population growth, we expect that we should see it um, uh, approaching this carrying capacity of k equals 10. And when we plot it, we see indeed this nice kind of uh, sigmoidal shaped curve where things grow and then level off. And I want to emphasize again that one of the beauties of this uh, integrate ODE command is that the output gives you functions that you can do anything with. So, you know, if I asked you what's the value of the solution at time equals 5, well, you could try to estimate it from the graph, or you could actually take solution dollar sign x and plug in the value 5 to it and see what you get out. And the value you get out is 5.75, which is more accurate than you're going to get from looking at the graph. So it's a, a very nice thing you can do. The next thing I'd like to show you how to do is extend this to solve systems of differential equations. So we'd like to solve these equations. These are actually from the SIR model um, for epidemic disease. So you should imagine that S of t is a function 
that tells you uh, in a population of people how many are susceptible to a disease at any given time, and I tells you how many people are infected with that disease. And these equations are the SIR model. Uh, a and B are parameters that measure sort of the transmissibility of the disease, and B measures the rate at which you recover from the disease. Um, and so uh, these are the equations, and so I'll, I'll show you how we can enter these into um, into R. So we come back over here and it's very similar to what we've done before. I'm going to arrow up to one of my previous commands just to show you that it doesn't matter what you call the output. Instead of calling it SOLN, I'll call it EPI since this is an epidemic problem. Um, and we're going to write DS uh, is minus A times S times I and then I'm going to put a comma and I'm just going to enter in my other equation, DI uh, di tilde uh, is a times s times i minus b times i. And I'm going to give some values for these constants. Uh, so I'll say a equals uh, 0 0.0026 and uh, b equals 0 0.5. And I need to give some initial conditions, of course. And now there's two initial conditions, s to start out with will say that there are uh, 762 people susceptible to this disease and I equals one. So the total population is 763 people and one of them is sick. And we will solve this uh, from zero up to 20, that should be fine. Um, so epi contains the solution and what I can do now is try to plot each part of the solution. So if I wanted to plot the number of susceptibles, I would say epi dollar sign s um, of t as a function of t, and I would like to plot fun that um, from t dot lim equals range 0 to 20. And we get this plot here. And then what I can do is go ahead and add the plot of the infected on top of that. So it's going to be a very similar command, except that we want i of t. Um, and we want add equals true to add it to the same plot. And just to distinguish it, we'll make the color of this one uh, be red. All right, so that's how you can solve a system of two equations and visualize the results. Now, of course, another way to visualize uh, the solution to a system of differential equations is to look in the phase plane. There's a way to do this in R. Um, it takes uh, a little bit of work, but it's not too bad, and I want to walk you through it. First, there are a couple of additional commands that you need to load in. So we're going to do fetch data of uh, something called mpp.r. And that seems to have worked. And then we'll do fetch data of something called diff eq dot r, and that worked as well. Um, and what you have to do is create, again, a function. You have to create something that describes the differential equations. And unfortunately, it's of a, even though it's kind of the same information that we did for our integrate ODE command above, we have to do it in a slightly different form to use this phase plane program. So just bear with me as we type this in. I'm going to call it SIR for the susceptible infected recovered model equals and I'm going to type function of um, s comma i, uh, and then I'm going to type some open braces, and we're going to have a equals 0 0.0026, b equals 0 0.5, I'm going to do a shift return to go to a new line, uh, and then I'm going to say ds equals minus a times s times i, uh, and then I'll say di equals a times s times i minus b times i, uh, and then I need a semicolon there, um, and I'm going to go to a new line, and then I have to say return c ds comma di. Um, and I know this looks like quite a lot of stuff, um, but basically, this says we're going to create a function of two things. We give it some parameter names. We define the differential equations. Again, now we're using an equal sign instead of a tilde. We just have to do things a slightly different way for the phase plane program. And at the end, we say that what we really want to know are the values of dsdt and didt. And from that, the phase plane will be constructed. So I um, 
I create that function, um, and then to turn on the little phase plane tool, what I'm going to do is type MPP, where DE equals SIR. So SIR is the name that I called this function above. This means the differential equation I want to study is the SIR equations I just defined, and we can give it some, uh, some limits for the phase plane. So we'll look on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, from 0 to 1,000, and on the y-axis uh, from uh, y lim equals c from 0 to 1,000 also. And when we run this, you're going to see something pop up. And aha, we get this little, um, these phase plane plots appearing here. And what we can actually do is click this little gear shift to pop out some tools. And we'll talk about what we see here. And if you want, you can start messing with these sliders to try to understand what's going on. You see S start and I start. These are initial conditions. So S, which is on the horizontal axis, and I, which is on the vertical axis, they both start at a value of 500. That's 500 here and 500 here. And we evolve in the phase plane by following these phase arrows, as you've learned. But this, these sliders let you change that initial condition. right? So as we change this, you see that position move. Okay. Now, you also see two graphs down here, and these are the graphs of S versus T, so that's the horizontal coordinate as a function of T, and I versus T, or the vertical coordinate as a function of T. So uh, these two plots together, if you kind of match them up, they give you the coordinates in the phase plane. Um, we are able to, I think, add additional trajectories. Let's see, there we go. So if you tell it to keep two trajectories, you can sort of compare two things. Um, you can also take trajectories and make them evolve further forward in time. So instead of going out to 10 in time, we're now going out to 34. We can also make them go backwards in time. Um, and that doesn't make too much sense for us in this current problem, but it might be useful sometimes. Um, and there's some other options to mess around with that I don't think we want to discuss here. So just be aware that for visualizing the phase plane, um, you have this tool available to you. Uh, and thanks for listening. That's it for this lesson.